talking about the Obutto Revolution Gaming Cockpit. Um, as you notice, right now, uh, when we got the one monitor on the uh, cockpit mount, uh, during the rest of this review video, you're going to see that there are three, but we're actually reviewing this monitor right now, and so I cleared off the other two to make room so I can just focus on this one for our review. But, um, sitting in the uh, Oboto Revolution gaming cockpit, it's very comfortable. There's no, uh, getting in and out can be a little challenging just because you're, you know, you're a little lower to the ground. There are some bars you can, uh, you know, like, uh, you have to get over with your feet, but overall it's very comfortable. Uh, Obutto really, Obutto really has a good um, handle on on what gamers can afford to pay. Um, you would think that you know when you get the optional acrylic tabletops, um, the triple monitor arms, which are usually you know sticking out here when I have three monitors on it, um, and the center flight stick mount, which is just removed temporarily so I can actually sit in this cockpit and turn around and talk to the camera. Um, it's actually very reasonable. The really good things about the Revolution are its keyboard tray, the arm, well first of all the keyboard tray itself in comparison to the Ozone is larger, um, giving you a lot more room just to rest your hands, uh, you can fit more peripherals, you can actually even do some writing on it if you have a piece of paper and a pen uh, or whatever. Uh, the arm which connects the keyboard tray to the cockpit is a three jointed um, articulating arm. Uh, it gives you a lot more options in terms of how you want your cockpit tray, or where you want your keyboard tray to, to be positioned. Um, on the Ozone, the previous cockpit from Obutto, the keyboard tray was on like a 90 degree uh, carbon steel arm that you really didn't have any type of, of customizability with, with it in terms of moving it around. I mean, it was pretty much just swivel on its, on its axis. Uh, this one here you can do a lot more with. Um, and if you want to tighten it down, just like the monitor arms or even the acrylic tabletop arms, you can use an Allen wrench and tighten down the joints so that it's fixed in place. As you can see with the uh, optional acrylic tabletops, it expands out the uh, width of the cockpit and gives you some nice platforms to put accessories on. Here I've got a custom built um, cockpit control panel and a couple of uh, store bought USB controls. I've also got a 2.1 speaker system from Corsair, uh, and of course down here where you can actually fit a display if you if you like. I've got an X Keys uh, 24 key keypad that is tied into certain functions and some whatever system I'm playing. Uh, speaking of the monitor mounts, um, the triple monitor mounts obviously are, are optional in this, but even the single monitor mount has this really cool arm similar to the keyboard tra keyboard arm. Um, and it allows some really great um, option in terms of how you want your monitor to sit. Um, let me move the track on away from this. Let it hang there. Swivel it around. Do a lot of really cool, cool stuff with it if you want to do it in portrait mode, you can. Of course, I've got my peripherals kind of blocking it away, but you can. Talking more about the monitor stands. Uh, the monitor stand itself is actually a separate piece from the cockpit frame. Um, this is a really good idea on the part of Obutto because if you don't want to use it, if you use a projector system, you could you know, put the monitor stand away. You can use it to rig up some sort of um, screen um, uh, projector screen holder from it um, with some tweaks, I'm sure. Um, if you want to use a really large you know, 40-inch plasma TV or whatever you choose to use, you can have it on there, and if you need to push it far away, because it's a separate piece, you can slide the monitor stand back further towards, you know, the wall or wherever you've got your cockpit, um, and that way there you don't blow your eyeballs out. Also, one thing that I really enjoy about the Revolution is that its pedal tray is a lot larger than the Ozone's pedal tray was. Uh, I could actually fit the Pro Combat rudder pedals from SciTech um, on the tray and actually use them. On the Ozone, I could put them in the pedal tray, but I couldn't actually press either of the pedals because there was a bar that came down and blocked the movement. Overall, the uh, upgrades to the Revolution, when you look at it compared to the Ozone, the Ozone was a fine gaming cockpit. I, I, I spent a lot of time with it. Uh, it even now, it's a, it's a real solid performer, but when you compare it to uh, what they've done with the Revolution, there's really no contest. Um, sure, the Ozone is lesser expensive now that this new one has come out, and if that's what your price point is, definitely go with it. You won't be disappointed. But 
when you look at the two of them, there's definitely a lot more versatility in the Revolution. The biggest issue between the two that I find that I, I actually like the Ozone better than the Revolution is the large acrylic tabletop that the Ozone used to that the Ozone could come with. It was an option. Um, on its steering wheel uh, tray, it was a much larger surface, and this this acrylic tabletop was huge. I mean, just a huge piece of acrylic, um, and it was so versatile because I mean it was essentially a new desktop that you can use. Um, kind of miss that with this one. This one has two acrylic tabletops, but they're much more narrow. Um, and while I do like that they move around, I would have kind of liked to have seen maybe the acrylic tabletops pushed onto the monitor stand so you can put your speakers up a little further away and then include somehow that original acrylic tabletop from the Ozone. Um, but that's really the only thing I can think of that the Ozone I liked a little better than the Revolution in. And setting this whole thing up, uh, it took a little over four hours. Uh, when it arrives now, um, the main performance PC was good enough to send us the optional components. Um, and so, you know, there were a couple extra boxes that you'll get if you just buy the base model. But you get two really huge boxes. One contains all of the parts and the other contains the chair. Um, first thing I do, um, and your instruction sheet will tell you this as well, is go to the website that has the instructional videos from Obuto. Um, Chris from Obuto, he's the, the founder of the company, and he also designed both the Ozone and the Revolution cockpits, has a great series of instructional videos that will cut down your, your construction time quite a bit. Um, without those videos, um, it would have taken a lot longer. So do yourself a favor, you know, he, he's the man who built the thing, he knows what he's talking about, he'll give you a lot of tips and tricks that they don't give you in the instruction sheet. Uh, the instruction sheet is a little spartan. Uh, it's literally just one sheet that has, I think it's like seven to nine steps on it. And it's not its not quite as good as like an Ikea instruction manual, which gives you a lot of intricate steps. It's more of a macro step process with it. Um, just, you know, take your time, lay out all your pieces first. Um, I recommend laying down a work cloth. Uh, some of the pieces had some lubrication on them, so they didn't rust. It's carbon steel, it's not stainless steel, so it will rust, um, even with the powder coating. So as far as what kind of games I played on this thing, um, I've just run the gamut of adventure games, uh, sports titles, um, train simulators, flight simulators, racing simulators, uh, pretty much everything that I can think of. Um, the cockpit adds a ton of value to every game type, uh, some more than others. In the, you know, I mentioned in the written review, in terms of shooters and stuff, um, you're not really getting too much more from the cockpit itself than you would just a regular gaming desk. Um, of course, the triple monitor mounts, you know, they're optional, like I said, but if you have them, uh, they will help give you a better sense of uh, situational awareness. Um, but that's probably it for shooters. Um, for the Sims, though, this thing is just outstanding. You don't have to excuse me, I think I'm getting a little sick. Um, so my throat's a little, a little rough, but uh, it's uh, an incredible purchase, an incredible value. I highly recommend it. Uh, after using the Ozone for, for a good while, and now this, I can't imagine going back to PC gaming uh, on a regular desk. It just it just doesn't compare. Um, some future mods I'd like to see with this thing. They, uh, well, talking about the mods that I've done, obviously I built this custom uh, display setup, this custom control system. Um, I had it on my Ozone for a while, and I had to figure out a good way to put it on the Revolution because, you know, this, this assembly here on the cockpit's a little different, it's a little more narrow. Um, so you can always mod your own cockpit um, components, put them on here. Um, but in terms of what they could do differently with this, um, a big thing is speakers. Now, you can sit your speakers on the acrylic tabletops, but what I would really like to see is I would like to see this thing support 5.1 surround sound by having a couple of speaker mounts here on the back of the chair. So you can have your front speakers in the front, your rear surround sound speakers back here, and then your sub behind your seat. I also included one of the butt kicker uh, bass transducers on the bottom of this thing to give it some, some vibration in the cockpit when the bass happens uh, in the game you're playing. It's really a cool effect. I highly recommend it. Overall, um, after spending a good while with the Revolution, I give it a 5 out of 5 stars or coins. Uh, whichever you want to call them. I think they're coins on our website, but, you know, it's the same principle. Uh, it's an excellent product. It's expensive, but, like I said, you get a lot of value for your money. 
Um, don't go with any of the competitors out there unless you really just cannot save up enough. Um, if at all possible, go with the Obutto. You will not regret the decision. Uh, the install process is a little uh, a little time consuming, but you'll get through it and you'll feel like you can build one in half the time once you do. Again, the base cockpit does not come with the triple monitor arms, does not come with the center flight stick mount, and it doesn't come with the acrylic tabletops. Those are optional components. Also, thanks to Main Performance PC for sending us one, uh, Main Performance PC is the only distributor in the United States of the Obutto products, uh, both the Ozone and the Revolution and the optional tabletops, flight stick mount, and triple monitor mount. Um, so make sure you hit them up. Um, it was really nice of them, uh, nice of them to send this our way. This product is uh, A+. Plus. I, I, I can't say enough nice things about it. Even with the few things that I would tweak here and there, it's light years above anything else on the market right now. Um, so go out there and uh, check it out.